On a chilly March morning, we woke up in Amarillo, Texas and drove to New Mexico. As the sun rose, it glowed off the distant rock formation and illuminated the desert. When we arrived in Santa Fe, it was market day, so we had to check out the beautiful farmer's market with all the fresh local goodies. After wandering around the farmer's market for a while, we checked out a local taco stand, highly rated, and it was totally worth it. We'll do four tacos, and we'll do two veggies, uh, one carnitas, and one carne asada. Wow! Oh my gosh. Let's dig in. I don't think we need to do reaction for this one. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> I love how they do it separately. No reaction needed for the tacos. They were as good as they looked. After spending part of the morning and afternoon in Santa Fe, we then drove north to our home for the weekend. Snowfall, just be careful, don't get stuck in here. Oh my god. This is like enduring for our poor little van. Uh oh. <laughs> At least we don't have a long, long van. No, if we had a long van, we would be screwed. Oh well. There it is. There it is. There's a straw bale house. Oh my gosh. The next couple of nights, we are all the way out here. Oh my gosh, how beautiful! Yeah. Whoa. Oh my gosh, you could live down here. It's like a yurt. <laughs> right. Oh my god. I mean, she she clearly put a lot into into it. That's super cool. Architecturally, it's just super interesting. So the artist who worked on this property. The first thing on this property that she built was this kiva, which is underground. As you can see, we came up or came down rather. Ooh, echo. echo. So yeah, pretty cool sp spot here. Yeah, that artist really had an incredible vision with these. This is a tree trunk, basically. And it's just her vision for this place is just spectacular. It reminds me of a Native American teepee in a way, um, with how round it is in the fireplace in the middle, the wood stove. Um, it's just so fascinating. And I'm just wondering what this is. It's a vortex. Let me stand it. Maybe it is a vortex. I feel very um in tune. What do you think? Would you camp here? It's so peaceful. I would camp down here for sure. It's super peaceful. You don't even hear the it the wind. Going. And it's um, climate controlled naturally because it's underground. As we arrived back at the casita, artist Andrea Vargas showed up and showcased some of her work that she worked on during her time at the casita. Thank you. 
Let me show you why I'm so excited to be um, celebrating my 30th birthday. This is the entryway, which I am obsessed with. I can't get enough of it. Here we are in the dining room. So it's big enough for you and five of your friends. And then we'll move right into the kitchen. The host left us this adorable goodie bag. And she also made a sweet little birthday card. You love it. Thank you, Courtney. Moving into the kitchen. As you can see, pretty much everything you need. And I think this is my favorite view from a window in the house. You look out right onto the mountains, so I think I'm going to actually really enjoy washing dishes from here. Little continuation off the kitchen is this incredible pantry with everything you need. And the attention to detail is amazing. She branded all these things. It's so beautiful. I can't wait to try some of those teas. They look delicious. Let's continue the tour over here. There is a lovely bathroom off the hall for your guests. And now we'll check out the guest bathroom. Here's the guest bedroom. So it's super cozy and comfy. Throughout the entire property, there is beautiful, beautiful artwork. For instance, take a look at the beautiful simplicity of it. And yet the intricacy all at the same time. I am obsessed with that piece. Now let's check out the master. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. You have no idea how lovely it is to have a king size bed after living in a van and having to sleep like on top of each other. This bedroom is absolutely stunning with yet another incredible view of the mountain to look out into in the morning when you first wake up. And the best part of the house, in my opinion. Look at this shower! Also with a beautiful view. shower and look at a view. And of course, off the master bathroom, you just step out and enjoy a patio space. This looks like it used to be a pool at one time. I'm really curious about it. It's very interesting. So this home was originally built by an artist. The owner was telling us about back in 2000. And this is the outdoor space, or at least the very beginning of it. Now, there's a little seating area off the master with yet another desk for the Digital Nomad. It's enormous. This actually used to be the artist's painting studio, so that's why you see a work sink in here as well. And I love that she kept the original features of the home um, to harken back to its past and the original builder. We'll head outside now, the most peaceful area of the property. I'm pretty sure I could sit here and stare out at the view all day and listen to the birds. But my favorite part about this property is just listen for a second. All you hear is the sounds of nature. That's it. That is the loudest thing here. We are so far away from civilization right now and that's just the best part. It's really meant to be a retreat but with the comforts of home. This is the dirt road that we're staying on. <clears throat> it's about a mile and a half probably off the main road. 
luckily our van is pretty high clearance, so we have zero issues on it. But it really makes you feel very remote and we love that. All right, so this is the most fun, we're gonna call it fun part of that's... the dirt road. And it's steeper than it looks. So anything that's longer than our van, you are totally bottoming out in this. Should I speed up on this or what? Dear God, no. This is probably as much off-roading as we're planning on doing on this trip. At least in this van. If anyone wants to offer us uh, free ATV rentals and give us the opportunity to do that, we'll photograph the heck out of the experience or an ATV tour, then we'll do some off-roading. We made it. Woohoo! We just have to get back here and then back out tomorrow morning. Two more, three more trips across. Two or three more trips. Okay. What are we having? Green chili cheeseburger. I gotta move the seed back. Yeah. It's a lot of food. Yeah, it looks like Let's it. Let's check this out. We're trying to go for all of the local specialties here. Even though we eat primarily a vegetarian um, a little bit of pescatarianism diet. We like to make sure we eat the local things when we're on trips because I think it's really important to experience local culture. So we're really paleo pescatarians, but um, for the sake of trying new things, we meet on vacation. So Dig in. I'm excited. I think I need to put We are at Ojo Caliente. It's definitely a treat. There's a private soaking for us coming up at four o'clock. So we're here for another hour beforehand just to enjoy the rest of the pools here on property. It's quite lovely. It was, it was super chilly outside, but we loved spending our entire day in the hot springs. All of the pools had different mineral qualities with different health benefits. This one was an iron pool. favorite pool? The mud pool. You would take mud, slather your entire body with it, and then dry out in the air for a little while, usually about 10 minutes. Private space. This is just for us. We have a Kiva going over here, and uh, technically it's clothing optional, but obviously for YouTube we're gonna keep this on while we're filming, and then we're gonna take it all off. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> to enjoy this little mini eco retreat right behind our private hot spring here. Oh, it's so lovely. I get to be naked. So for dinner, we made, or Natalie rather, put together this. <laughs> I took no part. I love making my own birthday dinner because I love cooking. And my favorite thing in the world is charcuterie. 
I don't really eat meat. Okay, I really have to stop saying that because I've been a meat eater this entire trip. But when we're home, I'm like full out vegetarian. So I'm gonna throw myself here. Mmm. I love salami so much. All right. All right, happy birthday. Thank you, love. Yay, I made a wish. I'm a little afraid about the creek. It's probably gonna be full. Yeah, probably. One of the things I wanted to talk about um, in this lovely casita is the build is a straw bale house. So you can see just how thick these walls are. That's because inside there are straw bales. And what this does is this allows the house to stay warm in the winter and cool in the summertime without a ton of additional heating or cooling. It's uh, nature's insulation and it works great. All right, bye bye, Casita. Bye. I miss you. I miss you already. So it just rained a little bit this morning, not a ton. But what's amazing is that the desert soaks up every little bit that I can get. These sagebrush and the prickly pears were kind of dull and gray a couple days ago. The prickly pears were all wrinkled and kind of turning red because of the drought. But with the rain, it kind of just makes everything turn lush pretty much instantly. It's really cool. How's your tamale? I'm eating my first ever tamale and it is a green chili cheese tamale and it's Phenomenal. Mm. Oh my gosh. We made our way down to Santa Fe where we would be spending the next four nights. We decided to rent an Airbnb because of the unseasonably cold temperatures for this time of year. Shortly after checking in, we decided to go explore the city. We're in Santa Fe. A lot of stores are closed because it's after five. But we're checking out whatever we can. Where are we up to today? Bandelier! It's a national monument. We're really excited about seeing it for the first time. It was recommended by like 15 people to us. The next morning was a little bit snowy as we made our way up to Bandelier, but it seemed to melt out pretty quickly. So we just are, we're trying to find Bandelier and my GPS was taking us away and I was like, okay, cool. And then we all of a sudden came up to like a toll booth type thing. And I was like, oh, that must be the park entrance. And then we got a little closer and we realized this is not the park entrance. And it took us through a road and the guy said, oh yeah, you can go through here. It's one of the ways to be in the rear. Just don't take a left for the next four miles. And this is a guy who's dressed in army fatigues. And um, because otherwise you're entering a government facility, a very, very, very restricted government facility, might I add. There were cameras and gates everywhere. So for four miles, we were just like, oh my God, this is so weird. And um, yeah, now we're off on the main road. We couldn't take any photos, no video. And yeah, here we are in that direction is where the government facility is past that forest. Yeah, there's like a big cliff. So you couldn't get here, there from here if you tried. It was just all very, very interesting. 
we were checking the radiation levels on our Geiger counter uh, while we're driving through the facility just out of curiosity. But there wasn't really anything abnormal. It was pretty normal background radiation the entire way through the, um, the lab facility. So every park we go to, we stamp in this National Parks Passport. This one might actually become a national park soon. So yay. Here we go. We are here in Bandelier National Monument. It is absolutely amazing. So this national monument is actually devoted to the Pueblo and cliff dwellings, which we're gonna be going inside of really soon. Um, I do find it interesting that the National Monument is the native land of the Pueblo people. It's named after a white dude. America, come on. There is actually talk of the Bandelier National Monument becoming a national park. In the near future, there's been uh, numerous bills proposed to do so. And we definitely hope that that happens and maybe they'll end up renaming it to honor the ancestral lands of the Pueblo people. So I have been nerding out about seeing ancient cliff dwellings from Native Americans, especially Pueblo cliff dwellings, for pretty much my entire life until I was six years old and first read about them in school. So this is a really exciting moment for me. I'm so excited to see this. Look, right up there, we can go inside. These were all individual rooms which they would use for storage, for living quarters, and they were so small because it was just easier to heat it in the winter and with the wind and everything. Let's go, check it out. Oh, I was wrong. So left. They have. How unfortunate for them. Very tiny. This is one of the cliff dwellings. I just climbed up on the ladder to. It's pretty small. And they have, looks like, a spot for the fire. But it is cozy. And you get a really nice view from here. How does one get up there? That's the real question they here. They probably had a ladder at one point. Some of the dwellings you can actually come up to. The ones that have ladders going up to them are visitor friendly. So I am in one of those dwellings. And this one's actually pretty spacious. There's a spot right there for some sort of storage. And there's multiple rooms in here. There's another room back there. There is, yep, there's more rooms and there's another storage nook. And Natalie's coming up as well. Wow. Oh my gosh. Good view. Can't really stand up. 
You can. I was like the tallest person when they built this. Yep. And I'm short. I could not even I'm only crouch in here. It's a pretty narrow spot over here. Can you go in? Right over here, there is what looks like a channel from a waterfall, probably a seasonal waterfall, and you can see the markings in the rocks. So it makes you wonder if they had some sort of a water collection mechanism down here in one of these houses. slot canyon kind of a man-made version though because basically this is all formed from people walking over hundreds of years It's actually really big. So this looks like some sort of storage down here. Plenty of space actually. And then there's some sort of a shelving unit right there. Some ventilation. You can look at the sky, stars, the moon. Definitely tingling in the lips. Oh, there it goes. Whoa. It's better with food. When you have it straight, that's where it really gets to you. But with the with the taco itself, it's not that bad. Here we are, we just arrived at Taos, getting ready inside our toasty van, having a little snag before we go. Yeah, we're gonna go and uh, get some shred on. Do you have that cool look to them? Because they have a blue tint too. Oh. 
Our ski storage setup actually works pretty well. Uh, we got the ski jack, which is for really to be used inside your house. Um, and we kind of jury rigged this to keep the skis from coming out. And it worked great on these bumpy roads. Here we are, bluebird day at Taos. We had some snow over the past couple of days and uh, it looks like there's still some powder stashes. So it's kind of a great combination. Some groomers, right? Yeah, that's what I like. I like the powder stashes. So we're excited to get up there and uh, start our day. What do you think, you're gonna come down here? I don't know, I'm not really much for moguls. I think there's plenty of groomers on this mountain that I will partake in. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Good. Go up while there's some good pow stashes on it. Taos so far is amazing. Probably the best skiing all year. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Comparison to what we have in New England, and it's not that New England skiing is bad per se. It's just we didn't have a good snow year, so that's why today is the best. Day. It's amazing. Bluebird day, groomers, pow stashes, a little bit of everything. So I am going up to. I'm going up to Krachina Peak which is kind of like Taos's backcountry area. Natalie's not with me. She is just gonna watch me come down from here. Um, we've had a little bit of snow overnight, but it's still a lot of moguls here. And there are some powder stashes. I'm gonna try to find them, but not really uh, something Natalie wanted to try today. But the groomers are magic. Uh, I honestly have not seen pristine groomed trails like that in a while uh, primarily because on the east coast we have just a lot of ice and um, this has been a tough year but this is great so this is Kachina Peak there is one slower lift that goes up to it and it's just kind of all backcountry So German, All love right. it. We're gonna see if this goulash suit is actually authentic. Alright, ready? Hang on. Okay. Let's see, authentic, maybe German goulash. Oh, that is lovely. It's very authentic actually. We're doing a little bit of mountain biking today, just outside of Santa Fe, actually in Santa Fe pretty much. For those of you who love mountain biking, there are so many trails in this area. It is absolutely fantastic. And I love the fact that just yesterday we were skiing and today we are biking and there's no sight of snow anywhere except in the mountains. So we are, I believe right over here. Maybe we can continue on and then do the technical trail. Yeah, and then look back. 
Yeah, that sounds fun. It's dinner time. We made our our favorite, which is a grilled veggie feast. It is really the best dinner. You can't go wrong. Every time. It's so good. On our last day in northern New Mexico, we hiked a small peak near Santa Fe for sunset. Watching that sweet golden light bounce off various desert plants was like magic. 